The mid-90s was like the Wild West when it came to Star Wars. You'd have comics, books, toys, and video games covering any era from ancient lore and the Old Republic to way past the original trilogy. But unlike today, there wasn't really any general story group overseeing it all. While it sometimes felt disjointed, it did pave the way for a ton of cool characters and projects to come out, and all of that can be seen in Star Wars Masters of Terras Kasi for the Sony PlayStation. Now, I'll start this review right off, and we can just get this out of the way. In no way, shape, or form is this a good game or a great game, even by 1997 standards. It's your typical 3D fighter, which is developed by LucasArts, and you can have dream matchups between Darth Vader and Boba Fett or Princess Leia and Chewbacca. The combat, even by 1997 standards, can feel stiff, and you're just slow to get up. You'll get caught in combos that are basically end the match in a few seconds, and if you do make it to the end of the arcade mode, you're greeted with literally a few seconds of a end screen that's literally just something like the Death Star blowing up Alderaan. Perfect. You win. The force was not strong with this one. Where this game shines is in its unlockable characters, because man, did they go all out on this in this department. If you were a Star Wars nerd back in the day, I mean, back when it was really nerdy to be a Star Wars fan, not like it is today, where it's just kind of nerdy and everyone's into the Mandalorian, you would know that the cast in this game is insane. There's definitely the characters that you would expect. Luke, Leia, Chewbacca, Boba Fett, and Han Solo. Those are the obvious ones. And then you get to play as some sort of deep cut characters like Hor, who's a Tusken Raider, who for a long time was just that, a playable Tusken Raider in Star Wars Masters of Terras Kasi. But later on, his story was actually sort of fleshed out to be the only surviving member of Anakin's attack during Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and later was sort of canonized as the Tusken Raider who attacks a wounded Darth Vader in the Star Wars manga Perfect Evil, just because the author, Abel Pena, was a fan of this game as a kid, and the deep cuts just begin here. You have Arden Lin, who is a character who might actually be making a comeback in the book of Boba Fett, or might just be used to provide some inspiration for a new character who, in the trailers of the show, certainly bears some resemblance. Much like the character Hor, she was created just for this game, but she gained some popularity and was later added to books and comics and toys and other projects, and she actually goes on in the Star Wars novels to serve as the Emperor's Hand, and she's able to use the dark side of the Force. If she does make it into the Book of Boba Fett, it would just add another tie-in to the main canon from this game. Even the name Terras Kasi goes on to be shown and mentioned in Soul Solo, a Star Wars story, when Kira mentions it. I mean, the deep cuts and ties to this game for modern Star Wars projects is just crazy, and it doesn't even stop there. Because this game does feature a handful of unlockable characters, like Darth Vader, who's the boss in arcade mode, there's a stormtrooper who's just a palette swap for Han Solo, then there's Jodo Cast, who is a palette swap for Boba Fett, and he's actually featured in the Star Wars comic Boba Fett Twin Engines of Destruction, in which he pretends to be Boba Fett after Boba Fett was presumably killed in the Sarlacc pit. Boba Fett hunts him down with Dengar and ends his story quickly. I mean, there's another story that might make it into the book of Boba Fett. Then there is the undisputed queen of Star Wars Legends, or Extended Universe as it used to be called, characters Mara Jade who is the wife of Luke Skywalker, but she starts out as an Emperor's Hand and a dark side user. Unlocking Mara Jade as a kid, not really knowing who she was, and seeing someone with a purple lightsaber years before we would see Samuel L. Jackson's Mace Windu was one of the absolute coolest things ever, and being able to use her in this game, even if she is just a palette swap for Luke, was mind-boggling as a kid. And while this 
game may be average to below average in gameplay, it definitely has the Star Wars vibe and theme going for it, which really is its only redeeming quality. Because without the Star Wars license, it's just a subpar fighter, especially with games like Bloody Roar and Tekken on the PlayStation, you can definitely do better. But if you're a Star Wars fan, I think it's definitely worth checking out. You have stages like Hoth, Cloud City, Dagobah, the Emperor's Throne Room, and they do all look pretty good for the time. The score is just your classic Star Wars music, and each of the characters can use their fist or use a weapon. So you can use Darth Vader to slap around Chewbacca if you want, but be careful of those hand-to-hand -hand fighters like Leia, who just easily outclasses everyone. As the movement in this game, as I've said before, is stiff and sluggish, the fast characters just have such an advantage, so the force is anything but balanced in this game. So while Star Wars Masters of Terrace Kasi is only likely to give you half hours of fun at best, it's really more of a collectible item or novelty item for Star Wars games or PlayStation collectors out there. So if you are looking to pick this up, it goes for around $10 on eBay. With that, I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you want more Star Wars content, I actually have a Star Wars channel hyperspace hangout where it's all star wars all the time including theories trailer breakdowns all of that stuff so thank you for watching and may the force be with you if you like this episode be sure to hit that subscribe button or check out our podcast on itunes or come hang out on twitch we'll see you next time and as always thanks for watching